So hell is real. I hope I have now your attention. Um, hell does exist. For the uh, second time in two weeks, our Lord Jesus speaks of this fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Now this is pretty serious language that he's using. It's very graphic when you think about it. But I think our Lord, again, one more time, is affirming the truth of the church's teaching on the existence of hell. Now today, there are, I think we have to admit, many of our fellow Catholics, our brothers and sisters, who do not acknowledge that there is a hell. They have chosen to their great peril to not believe that there is such a place where the damned would go. And I think they have been greatly deceived, thinking that there is no hell or not believing that there is uh, the possibility of somebody ever going to some place like hell. But the truth is that the church teaches, and this is clearly in the catechism, you can look it up, that immediately upon death, the souls of those who die in a state of mortal sin descend into hell, where they suffer the punishments of hell, eternal fire. So, somebody who knows the truth and refuses to live by it. Someone who intentionally, and that means willingly, and obstinately disobeys God, refuses to follow God's commands, rejecting God's love, refusing to seek His, God's infinite mercy, His forgiveness. Uh, one who refuses to repent and remain hard of heart can be lost forever and will go to this place of fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. So there are eternal consequences. There are eternal consequences for turning from the kingdom of God or those of us who have been brought into the kingdom to then be unfaithful to that kingdom of God. So I think that's what our Lord is really, uh, and last week, it's very interesting, at the end of the gospel last week, he says, uh, for those who've got ears ought to hear. I don't know if you remember that. I'm going to actually make sure I'm right on that because, um, you know, that was very much a warning, right, um, that our Lord is, is saying, um, Whoever has ears ought to hear. Whoever has ears ought to hear. So, um, now this deception, though that there is no hell, right, I think is the work of the evil one, certainly. Like the deception that the devil himself does not want to be known, right? There are people that say, well, their devil doesn't exist. And I think that is actually the greatest deception the devil has pulled uh, on the world, right, to make the world think he does not exist. He remains camouflaged, right? He's behind the scenes. But by the light of reason and the gift of faith, we know that there are satanic influences. We know that there are, there is real evil in the world. And Father Michael, at this Mass last week, at the 1030 live stream Mass, powerfully spoke on, I think, this demonic influence in our society. But the fact that we are in the kingdom of heaven, made part of that kingdom by our baptism, we do not need to be afraid of Satan or demons or those humans that are influenced by demons, whether they hold positions of earthly power in our government, in industry, in academia, or in the media or entertainment. So we don't have to be afraid. Now, we have to fight. There is a spiritual combat there's no question about that. But there's no need to be afraid. We have the weapons of righteousness. 
Right? We have the truth. It's truth that combats the deception of the devil. And it's that wisdom that we heard in that first reading from the book of Kings, right? that divine wisdom that Solomon requested. And God was so pleased that Solomon asked for this wisdom because this is what is necessary to be able to bring order. Right? Solomon was afraid he couldn't govern this vast people that had... You know, so many problems and, and so much um, a responsibility, right? He was worried about that. So he asked for something he needed to be able to bring order into chaos. Truth. What is right? Right? There is a right. There is a wrong. But there's so much deception out there about sin. You know, like saying there's no sin or there's nothing that is really wrong. And each person can define for him or herself their truth. That relativism. But we who are in the kingdom have the truth. So we have this power. So we have no reason to fear. And I really want you to look at that second reading now from St. Paul. Because we have been predestined to be part of that kingdom. The kingdom of heaven to be conformed. And what it is to be the kingdom of heaven is to be conformed to the divine image. The image of the Son. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that he is the firstborn among us who are many brothers and sisters. And so for those of us who are predestined, and it's very important to recognize that God wants all men, all women, all people, all children, every human person to be saved. This is what God's will is, what God wants. But of course, he leaves it by freedom. Right? He gives us that gift of the free will to whether to choose to love him or not. But we have been predestined and we have been called. So that called, again, is in baptism, it begins, but we continually be called to the sacraments of the church. We're continually called to follow um, the church's teaching in every area of our lives. We are called to be witnesses to the gospel in how we live out our faith. We are called to love those in that don't love us, that hate us. We are called to pray for those who persecute us. We are called to help those in need, the sick, the poor, those who are dying. We are called to those outworks of mercy. And then we are justified. Not by, our, not by all that stuff that we do, but only by God's love for us in his son Jesus Christ dying that we celebrate in every mass. Right? That, God, that Jesus died for us that we are justified, meaning we are made righteous, that we are not the wicked. The wicked are those that hold on to the sin and are obstinate and con continuing to commit mortal sin. And those are the ones who will be condemned, but us who want to be free from sin, those of us who want to have that blood of Jesus wash our sins away, that we can be justified so we can be glorified, meaning to live that full kingdom of heaven. So it's our duty to live in this kingdom, this gift of faith, and that means to remain in God's kingdom, continuing to be faithful to that kingdom, freely choosing to love God by being obedient to his holy will. Right? That is how we remain in the kingdom. We've been brought in the kingdom, we've been justified, now we have to remain in that kingdom. But, again, in this spiritual combat, we have to be aware of deceptions. We have to be aware that we can be allured away and be pursuing other things in the world like, like comforts or se personal security or money or prestige or pleasures, sensual pleasures, and that uh, we can uh, then get off course not putting the kingdom first in our lives. And that's what, again, those other two, there's other, these other parables that Jesus speaks of, of the, of the merchant, uh, of uh, the pearl, the pearl merchant, right, who looks for that, the finding a, a, a fine pearl, and he finds the pearl with great, of great price, sells everything to buy it, that we must put Jesus first in our lives. He who is that kingdom in, per, in person, and how do we do that? Well, we have to be careful, um, again, that we're not deceived by 
uh, our own opinions and preferences. And sometimes, you know, especially now, there's just so much going on around us that we have to really be discerning the truth and really looking to the teaching of the church, really looking to our faith, really practicing that faith the best we can. And I know that we're limited in terms of the sacraments in person, but to continue to encourage those in your domestic church to pray, pray the rosary, to combat evil, the devil, to overcome uh, the sins of the devil and the flesh and the world, um, and uh, to, to, really, to really be, uh, again, putting our Lord Jesus first in our lives. And finally, I think that, you know, it's important to, to recognize that if we have lost sight of that, so there may be those who are hearing this now, and we pray that God works in your hearts, that, that you may have maybe strayed uh, and maybe fallen into mortal sin, but it's not too late. It's not too late. You can come. Come to confession. Call the office. Uh, get an appointment with a priest. Because this is some serious stuff we're talking about here. This is not like uh, an option if, you, if we want happiness. We need to follow the kingdom. We need to be in the kingdom to, to have uh, that eternal life that God, Jesus, wants for us. To be justified and so that we can be glorified. So don't despair if somebody is in habitual sin, if somebody has fallen many times into sin. As long as we keep trying the Lord will provide. The Lord will give us grace. But it's those who st stop trying, those who stop asking for forgiveness, those who turn obstinately away from God and the church and really have a hard heart, those are the ones that are really in danger. Uh, and we have to pray for them. Maybe those, there may be those types in our families. And so, and so we are praying uh, for all of us that we will um, continue to grow in this experience of the kingdom of God, be that truth, or be that light to others, live in the truth always, know the truth, not be deceived. So through the intercession of our, our, our mother Mary, she will be with us, and she has so much power over Satan. Right? It's she who crushes, uh, but with her heel, the head of the serpent, that we go to her, and that, that he is so, Satan is so afraid of Mary, so we always go to her. And of course, St. Joseph, who's the terror of demons, that's one of his titles, uh, so we know he will uh, drive away all that evil as well so that we can fully live this beauty of the kingdom and be joyful and to let go of everything in the world, right? And really to, to focus solely on our Lord and uh, not let those things of the world distract us.